All right, hello everybody and welcome back to another shower vlog. Today's shower vlog is actually ranting on a specific subject and you know, I'll tell you, once I became a father, I started looking at things from a completely different perspective. And not just because, you know, your life has changed, it's different, I'm now in charge of, you know, other people's lives and things like that. But no, I'm talking about things like traveling. So when you travel with children, it is a little bit different than when you're traveling by yourself. Not only do you have to know how old can the kid be before you have to buy them their own their own ticket to, by the way, in case you wanted to know, under two they can actually be lab infants, above two you have to buy them their own ticket. So right now I have one infant who's you know, five months old who's able to be a lap infant still. We have a two and a half year old who now costs just as much to fly when my wife and I go anywhere. Uh, but at the same time, you know, he gets his own seat then, so it, it's a little bit, yeah, yeah. It's okay in that regard, it just costs more money. But still, things that you have to know and things that you have to understand have to do with, well, what about strollers and what about car seats and what am I allowed to bring on the plane with me? We've traveled a lot with our sons, um, more with the two and a half year old just because of the nature of the fact that he is older. But, you know, we've traveled a decent amount with the five month old as well. And we thought we understood the airline policies and things like that on traveling with car seats, with strollers, etc. And it's pretty much that you can bring a car seat, you can bring a stroller, and you can have them over and on top of your baggage allowance. Now, normally that has worked out without too much of an issue. We've always been able to bring stroller, car seat, whatever. Sometimes we, you know, we'll, you know, sometimes we'll check them at the ticket counter because it's easier. You don't want to lug it through the airport if you have enough hands to, uh, to carry, you know, the kids. If we're just traveling with like the two-year-old, uh, we're back before we had two kids. It was easier sometimes just to carry one and not deal with the stroller and the car seat, and things like that. And recently my wife was traveling with both of the kids. I didn't go, I was staying at home. So she brought with her, you know, the two year old, the five month old, a stroller and a car seat. And she actually, it's kind of funny because I was a little bit confused at this at first. And it gets us into a couple different weird areas of the policy and the rant that I'm about to have. But she ended up having the, checking the car seat at the, uh, at the ticket counter. Like that was her plan all along. She had brought the car seat for the baby was going to check it where the baby in a papoose and wheel around the stroller with the two and a half year old in it because it was, you know, keeps it easier to keep him in line because if you let him run, he will just run. You will have to chase him all over the place, uh, which is fun. Like he's, you know, he's, he's a curious little guy. He likes to go all over the place. So sometimes it's easier to keep him in the stroller and push him around. So that was her plan all along. Now, the funny thing was, We've traveled with this stroller numerous times on numerous different airlines, never had an issue when you're trying to gate check it. So it means you can basically take the stroller uh, through the airport so that the kid can be in the stroller and you check it right when you get onto the plane and you get it on the other side when, right when you get off the plane. Well, the people at the ticket counter told her that she was not allowed to gate check that stroller. They actually gave her a reason, apparently, I didn't know this until after the fact, but stating about the number of wheels that it had on it, having nothing to do with the weights and having nothing to do that it had an infant car seat attached to it. So these are both different things in the, in the policy that I had found out at a later time, but we'll get into that in a little bit more. But long story short, she was told she wasn't allowed to take that stro stroller through the airport to the gate because it was a new policy on the number of wheels that are on the stroller. Well, I will tell you, I looked up that policy. The policy doesn't exist about the number of wheels in the stroller. However, American Airlines, you do have some very interesting policies when it comes to traveling with children. Things I'm gonna warn your customers about right now, they're gonna rant and suggest that possibly you look at changing. So, initially, I started a Twitter feud with American Airlines because I was actually under the impression that I thought my wife had gone to the airport with our stroller that has the, the detachable car seat for the infants, and I thought that's what she was bringing through the airport, which is baffling to me that you could say that you can't have a stroller with your infant car seat that attaches to it and the infants in there. <laughs> so I initially, under a, a different pretense, wrote a Twitter post to American Airlines, and I stated, where I stated, here you can see here, I'm scrolling on the screen in a minute, but I said, so, at American Airlines, now it's a policy where you can no longer have a stroller with an attachable car seat checked at the gate. Forcing my wife to take a flight with our five-month-old and our two-year-old through the airport without a stroller. How is this a family-friendly airline? Shame on you. To which, 
American Airlines did respond, and they said that they actually wanted, to, uh, they said they wanted to make traveling with kids easy as they can, but if the stroller is over 20 pounds, it will need to be checked at the ticket counter. And I can guarantee you, our stroller is well under 20 pounds. We've traveled with it numerous times, numerous airlines, and they never even put it on the scale. I did find this out afterwards. They never even put it on the scale, so how would they know it was over 20 pounds? Like I said, they gave my wife the excuse, I didn't know this at the time, about how many wheels it had on it. It had four instead of three wheels. It wasn't one of the three-wheeled ones, it's a four-wheeled one, so all of a sudden that wasn't allowed, which is nowhere, like I said, nowhere in their policy. But as I also stated, I'm under the pretense that it's because there's the infant car seat in the stroller. So, needless to say, I was happy to find out that that wasn't the case until the response back and forth with American Airlines showed me something very interesting. They said that we'd like, they'd like to look into the, uh, the information a little bit more, so to please DM them, the rector locator. And I told them, no, I'm gonna, let's keep this public, here's the information that you need, keep this public and you tell me what's going on. Which they refused to do, stating because it was uh, you know, for privacy and for character limitations. They required me to DM them and not keep it on a live Twitter feed. So I said, okay, I will DM you the information and I'm going to post all the responses here for everybody else to see, pending it doesn't have any, you know, privacy or data concerns in the post. So I did DM them, to which I said, in regards to your stroller policy, forcing my wife to take our five-month-old and two-year-old through the airport without a stroller due to your 20-pound stroller limit, which we do meet, here's the confirmation number to look into this issue. And they said, thanks. We're, the, uh, apparently the same people were talking to me, even at the DM, which is nice, so they were actually following the chain. But they said, thanks for the follow-up with us. We're not trying to be sticklers about DM, but it's easier to explain more fully when traveling with children. Customers can bring a car seat, carrier, and stroller, but one or the other will need to be checked at the ticket counter. We're unable to accept both at the gate. Now, I would understand this if you're saying I was bringing a full-fledged stroller that my child can sit in, as well as another car seat that I had in tow for some odd reason. I would kind of understand that. But that's not what they're saying here, and it, it, the, the information in their, in their post clearly dictates that. It says, we're unable to accept both at the gate. Strollers should be under 20 pounds, fully collapsible, and jogging strollers are not acceptable to avoid damage. If the car seat carrier snaps into the stroller, they would need to be separated. So you are saying right there that if it's a car seat that goes into the stroller, they need to be separated. That's considered two different items. Now, I don't understand how on earth you can have an infant car seat, which is meant to snap into a stroller and be removed from the stroller because of the nature that it's an infant car seat because you then remove it from the stroller and you place it into a car. How that makes it two different items. The stroller that we have is a standard old Graco stroller. It doesn't have any other place the child to sit. There's nothing underneath it and the infant car seat snaps into it. So basically, you have a stroller that is useless until you have the infant car seat connected to it when it's in its infant mode. But apparently, that is not allowed on American Airlines to be gate checked. That has to be checked at the ticket counter. Therefore, if you're traveling with an infant, you're not allowed to take that through the airport, which is pretty intense, uh, which makes absolutely no sense to me you're trying to be a family friendly airline for one it, you're putting a 20 pound limit on a stroller and i get it i get all of this that you need to put some type of weight limit on things you don't want somebody showing up with a 100 pound stroller and expecting your people to be able to have to deal with that at the uh at the gate i get it but 20 pounds is a little bit a, a little bit low i say but explain to me this how is this an acceptable policy? Most well, car seats are meant to be moved seamlessly from the stroller to the car, docking bases, or buckled straight in. They're not a single combined unit with the stroller. Having a policy that only allows one or the other to stops the usage of a normal car seat stroller combination, thus relegating people to check the unit as a whole. Sure, my wife could have kept the car seat and checked the stroller, but she was also traveling with our two-year-old. So the in, the inability to carry the car seat with the five-month-old, as well as carry as well as carry a carry-on and the two-year-old, is unfathomable. To which they responded, we hear your feedback and displeasure on our policy. We'll share it with our team that works toward improving our carry-on items at the gate area. So basically, they're brushing me off. They really have no clue and no semblance of what they're doing to people when they're trying to travel with families. And the ironic thing is, I looked at their, their policy on their website. Their policy does actually state on their website, and I don't know how new this is, they told my wife it was a new policy. Uh, they also did tell her they were talking about this policy in relation to the number of wheels, which has, is not on the website at all. But their policy on their website does state the stroller has to be less than 20 pounds and that it's a car seat or a stroller that both cannot be checked at the gate. Now, the interesting thing is, while their policy says that, I pulled up 
two different random policies I just went to. Southwest policy, I took a screenshot of Southwest and United's policy. Southwest policy, customers showing with children will be allowed to check one stroller and one child restraint system or car seat per child without charge. Uh, so they have the child restraint systems or a, uh, a car seat is what they deal with because you can bring the child restraint systems on the plane and actually hold them on the plane. And it says the stroller and CRS or car seat allowance is applied to any type of stroller. The customer may check the stroller and CRS or car seat at the curb, ticket counter, or gate. So Southwest allows you to have your stroller and your car seat taken all the way through, spelled out clearly in their policy. Also, they don't have anything on here about weight limits for there. So Southwest, maybe you're just more of a family-friendly airline. And then United Airlines says, United accepts one stroller or folding wagon and one car seat free of charge for each child. This includes children under the age of two traveling on adults, uh, adult lap and infants traveling internationally on a 10% of adult fare. I guess there's an infant 10% adult fare with United. Um, customers can use strollers or folding wagons throughout the airport, but must be checked at the departure gate. And I'll, then it goes on to talk about they have these special compact strollers that you actually can bring on the plane too. Now, United's policy doesn't say anything about a separate car seat versus a stroller. They just don't mention anything in there, which would lead me to believe that you're allowed to have them. So American Airlines, even though I was a little bit confused at first with the situation that my wife had gone through, you have stated in your emails to me and your responses to me that what I thought was the problem is actually a problem. So had we gone with the infant car seat and the stroller, that also would have not been allowed. I really don't like the fact that my wife was told a policy that doesn't exist having to do with the number of wheels because, like I said, we've traveled with a stroller many times from many different airlines, even through American before, which we will try to avoid from here on out. But the stroller is definitely less than 20 pounds. And you have to allow people to bring a stroller with an infant car seat that attaches to it through the airport. Why would you bring it to the airport if you weren't planning on checking it at the ticket counter? Because your plan revolved around you wheeling that thing through the airport. And yeah, granted, maybe people, maybe your response is going to be people need to read our policy. We clearly stated on our website. Yeah, you're right, you do. You're one of the few airlines, actually, you're the only airline that I can find that has this restriction. So we actually are flying Spirit next week. And I'm going to have to go back and look at Spirit's information, but I do remember we thoroughly read Spirit's because I was worried Spirit being a budget airline, they're not going to have the same stroller policy, but they clearly talked about what you're allowed to bring as a stroller. I just didn't look at what could be gate checked versus ticket counter checked, but I guess I'm just going to have to go through every single airline I ever fly in their policy. And why on earth that would be different between American Airlines, United, or Southwest is beyond me. American Airlines, you're not a budget airline. Don't try to budget out your customers and not make you a family-friendly airline for people to fly because people like me, we're not gonna fly anymore. So anyways, that is my, whew, that is my rant for the day, American Airlines. You really should look at that stroller policy. You really need to change it. You really need to make things easier for your customer. The saying customer is always right, I don't believe in. I do believe that you should strive to make things as right for the customer as you possibly can. American Airlines, until you change your policy, I won't see you again.